All right, greetings and welcome to yet another online service for Bread of Life. My name is Jess and I just have the privilege to be part of the Bread of Life ministry, which is a, a ministry of Atlas for Life. And that we have been meeting prior to having to go online for services for over a year now. And we would meet each, the first Wednesday and the third Sunday of each month. And that was at the High Rise or the Nokomis Apartments here in Pipestone. Um, during that time, we just share in food, fellowship, talking, laughing, crying, praying with each other, and then a time of worship where we would sing songs together and then just sharing a devotion, which is the Word of God. Um, our hope in sharing of those things together is just that everyone feels welcome, that they feel accepted and important while they're there, and that they just feel the love of Jesus through those things. Um, the intentions behind Bread of Life, um, we hope that you come as you are and if there's any change that happens, that that can be attributed to our Lord and Savior Jesus, because it's only by His grace that change can happen. So, I just want you to know that uh, we are praying for you doing, during this time. Prayer is a very important part of the Bread of Life ministry, and we'd love to hear any prayer requests you have um, during this time when we are unable to meet in person. Well, last time when we had our last online service, the title was I'm Hungry. And if you remember, we really just dug into having the desire, the hunger to search and seek the Word of God and how it is truly the only thing that will satisfy our souls. And sometimes it's that deep need that we don't even know we're missing until we reach out and reach into this book. Um, so, and the, the verse that we shared, John 6, 35, I am the bread of life, Jesus told them, no, no one who comes to me will ever be hungry, and no one who believes in me will ever be thirsty again. And it's hard to imagine not being hunger, hungry, not thirsting, not desiring, but if we are truly continually looking to this word of God, we can have that, that satisfaction. And I've just been thinking lately, too, about a guidebook, um, whether it be looking for parenting or for marriage or for whatever journey you on, you're on. And we're all in, on the same journey to some level right now with dealing with um, everything going on in our country. And this is the ultimate guidebook. Um, when we're seeking and searching, if we are looking to this book, we will find our answers. It is alive and it is active and it is written, written for you and it is written for for myself, and um, that is just a true promise that you will find answers if you search. And we went over a uh, Bible study method quickly to do that. It's a, quite a simple method, and it's called SOAP. I think we agreed that we would not want to eat SOAP, but it is a good way to study the Bible. And it's just S-O-A-P. So the S is for Scripture, and it's just finding passages of Scripture, reading them. And then the O is observing. What is this saying to me? What is the main overall purpose, intent of this verse? And then the A is just application. How can I change my daily life because of what I am reading right now? How can I apply this to my daily life? And then the P is simply prayer. And it's turning those thoughts, that time you have spent in the scripture, observing and applying it and just praying and asking God to shed light on it and giving me strength and hope to, to make those changes, to walk in his light. So uh, I threw out there last time that if you are hungering, if you are desiring to have your own Bible that you don't have, we have these always available to gift. And also any devotion or something you've come across that you really just like to have in your home, just to have another way to spend time daily in the Word, well, let us know. We'd love to get you one. Uh, my contact info is on the Facebook page, Bread of Life Ministry. But you can call Atlas. It's 507-562-5777. Leave a message. They'll get to me. And then my email, too, is just bosma.jessica at yahoo.com. You can also just message through Facebook. So this contact info is also on the page. But please feel free to reach out with prayer requests or if you are desiring any of these things to be sent to you. So the next devotion service, we are going to be talking a bit just about how the struggle is real. And I'm giving my permission, even though I know none of you need my permission, but just be okay with not being okay. Um, to just be honest about how you're feeling. If you're at the end of your rope, if 
feeling burdened, tired, overwhelmed. I'm just going to come to you with my honesty, and I hope that you can do that too. And we will be reading the verse from Matthew 11, 28 through 30. And if you have this Bible, it's on page 1224. But it's Matthew 11, 28 through 30. Come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take up my yoke and learn from me, because I am lowly and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. So we want to come with how we are feeling and know that we have a place to go um, and that can guide us, that can lead us. So that will be the next devotion service, which will be Wednesday, June 3rd, likely online again. Um, so just stay tuned for that. So tonight, we're switching things up a little bit, and you're going to hear a little less from me, which I'm kind of excited about. Uh, we're going to have a couple of videos here. So the first one is actually a children's message. And I don't know about you, but sometimes it's time for the children, come on up. And I sit there and I'm like, oh, that spoke to me. And that is the case with this. So I asked if I could share it. And it actually also goes along really nicely. Um, for those of you who were in attendance at our last in-person Bread of Life devotion service, we went through the armor of God. And looking back, seeing how very appropriate and timely that was, thanks be to God. And that is in Ephesians 6, 10 through 18 is where it is spoken about the, the armor of God. And we talked about that and talked through it and the importance of we have these wonderful tools that God has given us to walk our journey on this earth, to fight the battles that need to be fought successfully with God's help. But we need to put on um, those tools he's given us. And this message just really put that picture in my mind. It just really beautifully displays and depicts what it means to have to put on the armor of God. So I hope you enjoy that. In the second video, um, I'm just going to read this verse, first of all. First Thessalonians 5.11, which that is on page 1551. And we actually read through this at the end of the last devotion service, too. But it is. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up as you are already doing. And I really hope this second video just really does that for you. I hope it encourages you and just builds you up. Just a quick message side note. Although Bread of Life is a ministry of Atlas for Life here in town, you may notice also my connection through the Cornerstone E-Free Church. That is my church home. Uh, the videos that are being shared have been uploaded onto our church's website, and the reason for that being that my pastor has graciously agreed to help me with this. Um, he's learning too, but he's letting me come alongside and do some of these things. I had originally hoped to do Facebook Live always during the time, just thinking that'll make it feel more real and like we're maybe more together. But what I've learned along the way, as we're all learning so much throughout this, is that some people that don't have access to Facebook then weren't able to be part of those messages. And then so some people are kind of feeling left out. And this way, recording ahead of time, um, I can make sure that anyone that doesn't have access to Facebook can can receive the link and can watch these and I hope feel encouraged by it. So that's why I've been going about it this way. And I had committed to never doing re or redos, to just always be real if I start talking crazy, just to not edit. But I, for the first time today, I started talking and I was like, I need to restart. That just was bad. So, and also it's morning time right now. So when I say good evening, it's actually morning that I'm recording. So it's, it's just all part of, of this that we're learning and growing through, and I hope giving grace through. So um, that is a note on that. And also then Tabra is our worship director, and she just gladly, gladly shares her gift of worship and music with us. So I'm grateful for that too. And she actually is the one sharing the children's message today. And many not but not all of the others that have just been faithful helpers have been givers, and maybe some of those familiar faces you have seen are also a part of Cornerstone. So many, but not all. And it's just amazed me along the way with how many people it takes to make each evening at Bread of Life work. Each devotion service, whether it's on the front lines or behind the scenes, just all the people it takes to come together. And I'm just grateful to each and every one that has helped along the way, that has shown their support through giving, through being there, through prayers, whatever it may be, and to all the beautiful people who have attended. And that's just a picture of the body of Christ. 
that's my church family, my other friends, my other family, serving Jesus, not serving me, not serving the Bread of Life ministry, but serving God through coming alongside, through walking alongside Bread of Life and through walking alongside me. So I am just really forever grateful for that. And that is what Bread of Life has become to me. It's become my Bread of Life family, uh, much like my church family has. So my hope and prayer is always just that you feel part of that family. And that in addition to being part of the Bread of Life family, that you also too do have and are part of a church home. Um, know that you are welcome during this time, of course, to tune in to Cornerstone services for our online services. I think we can look at this either as a really difficult time or a really wonderful time to check out um, other and new churches. I know there are another, a number of other really wonderful churches in our area that you could be checking out during this time. Because we can be online, drinking our coffee, wearing whatever we'd like, and we can be avoiding maybe the awkwardness of being the newbie and everyone's coming up like, what's your name? Where are you from? Um, and then when we can meet in person again, everyone will kind of be new. So it won't be awkward. Otherwise, everyone will just be awkward because we'll be like, what's it like meeting together? So I just encourage you to be checking out um, churches online. And if you don't have a church home already, finding one that works for you. I, I think I can speak for pastors in that they would love to hear from newcomers that have been listening in on their services and they would love to reach out to you as you seek to find that church home for you. So I hope you feel encouraged by this evening. I hope that the joy just fills your hearts. So thanks for tuning in and I'm just going to pray here before the videos begin. Lord Jesus, I just thank you for this day. God, I thank you that you have provided a way for us to stay connected, um, that many of these things were in place long before we knew we would need them so badly. And um, I thank you for your guidance. I thank you for your word, Lord. Um, just give us each the desire to go to it. As we continue to walk this journey, we're going to have more and more decisions and opinions um, facing us. And I pray that we can continually look to you and we continually point others to you and go to your word for our guidance as we are each alongside this journey. And I pray that we can give grace as we receive grace. Um, I pray this evening and always, God, that all the glory goes to you. I thank you and praise you in your name. Amen. Um, we're going to be talking about the armor of God today. So if you want to turn in your Bibles to Ephesians 6, verse 10, we're going to read through it, and then we'll talk a little bit about it. So Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 says, Finally, be strengthened by the Lord and by his vast strength. Put on the full armor of God so that you can stand against the tactics of the devil. For our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the world powers of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavens. This is why you must take up the full armor of God, so that you may be able to resist in the evil day, and having prepared everything to take your stand. Stand, therefore, with the truth like a belt around your waist, righteousness like armor on your chest, and your feet sandaled with readiness for the gospel of peace. In every situation, take the shield of faith, and with it you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is God's word. Pray at all times in the Spirit with every prayer and request, and stay alert in this with all perseverance and intercession for all of the saints. So we're told in this passage that we need to put on the full armor of God. We've got the helmet. We've got the breastplate of righteousness. We've got the, the shoes of the gospel and the sword of the Spirit. We've got so many different things that God has given us to protect us because Satan would love for us to believe all of his lies. He wants us to be sad and he wants us to be angry and fearful and hurt. He wants all of those things and God doesn't want those. God wants us to be strong and joyful and full of peace and happiness and well sometimes even happiness doesn't count there but joyful he wants us to be because sometimes even though we love Jesus we go through hard things. And so this is a perfect example we're going through this time where a lot of you don't get to see your friends or even your, your grandparents, you don't get to go to school and, and play on the playground, all of those things. And it seems like a little bit of a sad time. 
And yet God says that if we put on this armor, we can still be joyful and we can be protected and we can make the best out of even hard times like this. So I just want to give you a little bit of a picture. I've got a cup of water here and inside is a clementine. And the clementine has got its armor on. See, the skin is still on and he's floating. He's doing really well. This water isn't giving him any trouble. He is strong. He's held together really good and tight. It's not too heavy, the water. It's not pushing him down. He's doing pretty good. Life is pretty good. Well, let's talk to his friend over here. This guy is not doing very good. His armor is not on. And look, you can even see he fell apart. He's in two halves. Um, and, he, and he sunk to the bottom. And this is a really good picture because if we put on the armor of God, Satan can't tear us apart. Satan can't drown us in anger or fear or pain. But if we don't have God's armor on, oftentimes we look a little bit broken. Actually really broken without the armor of God. So I just want to remind you that as you go about the week, every morning, you need to remember to put on the belt of truth. Remember what truth God says about you and about your situation. You need to put on the helmet. You need to protect your mind. You need to protect your heart. You need to remember that the spirit of Jesus lives inside of you. And that you're protected and you're safe. And you can find joy even in the worst situations. So be like the Clementine who keeps his armor on. Don't be like the Clementine that falls apart without it. I love you guys so much. And I wish I could be with you in person. And I can't wait till I get to see you again. But remember this week that no matter what the situation, you can put on the armor of God and be protected. Hey, Brita Blipers, it's Ryan. Just wanted to uh, say hi. I guess there's this virus thing that's going around. I don't know if you've heard about it, but uh, anyway, it's preventing us from meeting um, in person together. So we're going to uh, continue to do this uh, thing on the internet or the World Wide Web. I don't know if you've heard of that, but it's this thing. You can talk to people, exchange information throughout the whole world. So it might be a fad, but you never know it. We'll see. So anyway, really miss you guys. Really wish I could see you, all your smiling faces. Um, yeah, thank you so much for being a blessing to Jess and the boys and our family. And yeah, we just really love you guys. We miss you, praying for you. And uh, yeah, Jesus is pretty awesome. Really, really uh, excited to see you guys all again. And I know we will soon. So love you guys. God bless. Hey everybody, just wanted to say hi, that I miss worshiping with you all, and just to remind you that God is working in our waiting as we hope for a time when we can come back together again. Hope you're all Good well. Good morning, everyone. I am an early riser. I love early mornings. The birds are chirping, the sun is rising. One morning, as I was heading to work and listening to a Christian broadcast on the radio, I, they were talking about the sunrise. And so I was, I looked over it and I saw the most beautiful, beautiful sunrise, one of God's beautiful creations. And so I just stopped and I took a picture and Jess will show you that. And I miss all of you. I miss worshiping with you. I miss working in the kitchen, having a, having a few laughs. And I'm hoping that we can all worship soon. Take care. Hello friends. Just dropping you a quick message to let all of you know that I'm thinking and praying for everyone during this time. I so look forward to the time with my Bird of Life family and I have been missing all of you, but especially you kiddos. Um, so I'm very much looking forward to a time when we can all be reunited and um, just enjoying food and fellowship together and just miss you all. And I guess I would just like to challenge you that even though these times are difficult and um, just try to find joy each and every day. Um, I started doing this every day. I wake up and I write down five things 
um, that I was grateful for that happened in the last 24 hours. And it's really kind of helped change my mindset through this. And they're small things. So challenge you. Find the joy. And I look forward to seeing you guys soon. Miss you all. Just finding joy. Cornerstone Women's Ministry Team. And we want you to know that we are thinking of you. We miss you very much. Bye guys, hope you're doing well. Hi folks, I'm baking cookies and thinking about a time when I can share them with you. Even though we can't come together for the convenience of Worship with Bread of Life, uh, I pray that you are feeling God's love every day and seeing God's work in your every day. John 14, 27 says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Until next time, friends. Hey, hey Bread of Life family. I just wanted to say I really miss you and I wish I could jump in this pond, but... time missing my bread of life friends like crazy I don't know what you've been busy doing I've been talking to my elephants praying for my family like a hundred times a day and praying for you and with you for each other right and I just want you to know that God loves you so much and that he promises us oh, a great future, and this will be over soon, but he tells us we are his treasured possession. We are his chosen, that he has great and wonderful things planned for our lives, that he never leaves us alone, that he is always with us. Till we see you soon. Love ya. Hello, everyone at Bread of Life. I have a quick verse to share with you. The Lord your God is with you. The mighty warrior who saves, he will take great delight in you. In his love, he will no longer rebuke you, but will rejoice over you with singing. That's Zephaniah 3.17. Take care. Hello everyone, I hope you have enjoyed seeing some other familiar faces and hearing from others who have also been missing meeting together for our Bread of Life evening worship services. I just want everyone to know that my sincere and heartfelt thoughts and prayers are with you all. They have been and will continue to be. And as we navigate what the future holds, just know that I am praying through it and trusting God's timing and His plan for what things will look like going forward. Um, I miss so much about our evenings together. We had some pretty good laughs. Of course, there were tears. And uh, I just really miss times when I got to pray one-on-one -on -one or in a small group with some of you. I think the thing I miss the most is the worship. Just hearing all the different voices singing together and lifting praises to our God always just brought me such joy and such peace and just hope. Hebrews 6.19 says we have this hope as an anchor for our soul, firm and secure. As we hold tightly to that hope, I just pray you feel God's presence. You know you are loved. You know you are not alone. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time, see y'all.
and sing out to the night. Cause even when the world caves, even when the fight calls, even when the wars are raged, I take heart. I know you are greater, forever you are saved. Sing your praise.